This is Tutorial Toucan, back with another bird's eye guide through all things tech. Today, we're going to talk about YouTube channel art. Specifically, how to create an easy banner template on Vector, which is a free and simple graphic software. The hope is, by the end of the video, that you'll always have a perfect fit whenever uploading to YouTube. No more crying, am I right? Anyone can use Vector, and by the end of the tutorial, you're going to have a spot-on YouTube banner template that you can reuse for the rest of your YouTube career. If you're interested in some other tutorials on other aspects of banner art, check out the link here and others in the description below. Lastly, shout out to Noelle and Kona, a vlogger, thrifting, and lifestyle YouTuber that I partnered with today in creating this video. If you're interested in checking out her YouTube channel, there's a link below in the description. Okay, let's get started. So here I am on Vector.com. This is a completely free online software that you can use. You'll need to sign up on their website, so take a moment and do that. Okay, so assuming that you already went ahead and you logged in and you made an account, you're going to be at basically the screen, but obviously you're only going to have Welcome to Vector here. In order to make a new file inside of Vector, you're going to click on Create File. Once this opens up, you're going to notice there is a white area in the center. So where the big square is, this is your artboard. Anything outside of this gray border is not going to be visible. So what we first want to do is we want to go into pages up here on the top left hand corner and we want to make sure our page dimensions fit the channel art pixel dimension given on YouTube. Underneath page settings, you're going to notice it's 640 by 640. This is a square. Um, this is not going to work for channel art. Channel art um, is in a rectangular shape and so we want the biggest size possible for our artboard so that everything else goes inside of that and everything's fitting correctly. Underneath page settings, in the width box, you're going to go ahead and make sure it says 2560 and press enter. Once you do that, please click the link icon so that it goes away. So you're going to type in 1440 for the pixel size there, and then you're going to click add page. When you add this page, you're going to notice that it says two of two. Go ahead and click the X button on page one of two to delete it. You're going to notice our artboard changed. Our square now looks different and that's good. We want it to be a rectangle. You're going to click up here to layers. Once they're on layers, you're going to notice nothing's in it. Let's make our first layer. So we're going to click on the rectangle and we are going to start at the very top left hand corner. We're going to click and drag and as best as you can, we're going to try to end at the very bottom left hand corner. Now, if we did it perfectly, this number should read 2560 and 1440. And again, that's width and height at the bottom right hand corner of the program. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to change this color by going to background on the right hand side, clicking on the color, and you're going to change it to more of a gray. We now have just created our TV background size. So again, this is max size for your banner. And over here underneath layers, we're going to go ahead and rename this by clicking or double clicking the name. We're going to just call it TV. Once we do that, go ahead and click this lock button. It's going to be slightly grayed out, but go ahead and click on it. Once clicked on, you're going to go to rectangle again. And this time, make your square as big as you want. Make sure that you have this square selected with the lines around it. And in the bottom right hand corner, we're going to change these dimensions to 414. 0.09. Make sure you undo the link here. We're going to change this one to be 506.07. And then make sure you press enter. So after you've changed the width and all that, you're going to go up here to background, you're going to click on the color, and then we're going to change this to more of a yellow. And we're going to just move this square so that way it kind of fits right in this corner. If you're having a hard time getting it to fit here, well, you can go up here to snapping and click on none. Make sure that you do have this selected though, because it does matter. So none. And then you will be able to use your keyboard arrows to move, to move it, to get a nice, perfect look. You're going to select it again and you're going to click control and C on your keyboard and then click control V. It's going to paste a second identical square or rectangle. And then you're going to click and you're going to drag that to the bottom left hand side, just like that. 
The next thing we're going to do is we are going to make a new rectangle. You can make it however big you want to because we're going to change the dimensions. And that first width um, is going to be 1, 5, 4, 6. Second is going to be 4, 2, 3. And stick that relatively right about there, okay? We're also going to change the background color. You guys should be getting pretty good at this. Change it to a green. Next thing that we want to do is we want to name this. We're going to call this desktop min dash mobile. Press enter. So now that we've done that one, we're going to go ahead and click on this green one here. We're going to control C to copy, and then we're going to click control V to paste. Um, move this over, change the background color. This one's going to be a light yellow as well. We're going to change the width size to be 1855. You do not need to change the height because this height is the same as the green height, which is why we did that. What you're also going to do is you are going to change the name of the yellow box, and this is going to be your tablet size. Once you change the name, Click and drag it below desktop min and mobile so that we can see the desktop min above. So you can kind of now see where the layers come into handy. All right, go ahead and control C that yellow rectangle, control V it. So we just copied and pasted it again. We're going to name this next one, we're going to name it desktop max. And then with it highlighted, let's change it to more of a red color. And we're going to kind of place it over here on the side. And then we are also going to click and drag desktop max all the way below the tablet one. So in order, you should have desktop min on top, then tablet, then you should have desktop max, then you should have your rectangular paths right here, and then um, your TV. Okay, we're going to change this name to blocking. And then we're going to click blocking and we're going to make it look like this. Click on these two and we're going to lock it. So both of your blocking pieces should be locked. And what we should have in between the blocked pieces is this red piece. Come down here to dimensions and you want to unclick that link button and we want to name this value um, type out 2560. So you're going to see that the red piece is now the whole way across. So this is good. The reason why we made these blocking pieces here is because we wanted to make sure that our desktop max, our tablet, and our desktop min is centered perfectly inside of our artboard overall. What you wanna do now is you just wanna make sure using your keyboard arrows that this is as centered as possible. Once you like where this red piece is, you can go ahead and go to your desktop max. You can lock it. Then you can go to your blocking and you can click this little eye icon. If you click on it, it makes those boxes disappear. It doesn't delete it. You just simply click on it again to have it reappear. What we want to do next, kind of use your eyes and using your keyboard, just simply move your yellow piece over. And I, again, guesstimating this is going to be okay because it's really not that big of a deal. We have it centered. That's probably the hardest part overall. And looking at this, um, again, we're just simply looking at it and figuring out, hey, does it look about the same? You'll, you'll now notice both red sides look basically equal, and that's what we want. The next thing you want to do is you want to move the green part. And we want to look at both of the yellow squares on either side, and we just want to use our arrows and move that green over so that they look basically equal. And that's kind of the goal here. So once you have that, you now have your TV, which is the gray, your desktop max, which is the red, the tablet, which is the yellow, and the desktop minimum size, as well as the mobile, what it looks like on mobile. Make sure you lock all these layers. We do not want to really move these or edit these much. So now that we've made the dimensions of all of our channel art pieces, which are represented in different colors, and they're given on the left-hand side of your layers panel with a name, you'll now be able to always know what is what based on the eye icon because you can toggle it on and off. I'm gonna show you how to fill this out and lay it out in a moment. What you wanna do next is you wanna hit this back button and go back to your profile. It's gonna bring you back to your main area. What you then wanna do is you wanna click on this and you wanna call it banner 
template. You don't want to ever directly edit this one. The reason being is that this is your template. You don't want to end up ruining it, changing the dimensions, and then being kind of stuck in a position where you don't remember what the size was. So what you want to do instead, every time you want to change your banner, just simply go up here to duplicate. It will take all of the data inside of this file and copy it into a new one. Change the title to whatever that banner art may be. For me and this demonstration, I'm just going to call this Noel and Kona as if I was doing this for the first time. And then I'm going to click open. So what I'm going to do for this last part, I'm just going to show you in a simple way how to lay out the things in the right places for it to look correctly. On the left hand side, you're going to notice everything is locked. Inside of the TV area, unclick the lock button because we're going to unlock it. And we actually want to change the color of this. Now, whatever color you decide on for your channel, your channel's theme colors, you want to choose. Then you're going to relock that layer because again, we don't want to accidentally move it. The next thing you want to do is you want to think through whatever is going on in that center area. So in the green section, that's where you want your most key elements. It's the thing that you want everybody to see regardless of what it is that they are doing, whether on mobile or desktop, etc. Basically at this point, you want to start creating your banner. You want to make sure that your name or your logo is set within these parameters of the green section. Um, if you want to be able to see your text a little bit more clearly based on the backdrop, what you can do is you can hide the tablet and the desktop max levels and just show the green section. Um, and then you can toggle that green section on and off with that visibility area. So that way you can kind of see what it looks like without all of that. Jumping back to the finalized product, I'm going to go ahead and just show you very briefly how this is laid out with the blocking at the bottom. So you're going to notice on my layer panel that I have all the layers up here. This is actually the actual text itself. So again, if I toggle this on and off, you're just going to notice some of the text things that I have. And I'm going to show you where all this stuff is now with the blocking. So you're going to notice I have two blocking bits here. This again helps me in the future, just in case I move something by accident. I have the desktop minimum and the mobile, the tablet, and then the desktop max value. So you're going to see that overall, this whole logo is made to fit inside of the green area because it does. When I do go to upload it into the channel art section, it fits perfectly. So whether you're viewing on mobile, you're viewing it on a desktop, you're viewing it on a tablet, on the TV, it's going to look, I know what it's going to basically look like based on the previews that we can see inside of YouTube, as well as what we can see here. So nothing's really ever a guess to me. And that's how you create a YouTube channel art template on Vector. If this video was helpful in making your life easier with channel art, feel free to leave a comment down below. I love to hear from my viewers. And as always, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more quality 4K tutorial videos. And until we meet again, remember, this is Tutorial Toucan, your bird's eye guide through all things tech. Signing off.